And one thing I want to make very clear is that you don't lose anything. So if I go through here and let's do, let's make our draw size very big. We have our standard brush here. And again, we'll get more into this later, but we're doing some major changes to our object here. And let's say uh, I switch back over to any of these. So I can go through here and I can click on Helix 3D, which is a primitive, hasn't been converted yet. I want to go through here and make any changes to this object. And I can go back to our poly mesh ring 3D we we're sculpting on, we still have it. So nothing ever disappears from here. You'll always be able to get it back in your ZBrush session. Uh, in fact, even if I click this R button here, which will kind of clear out some of this, everything is still in the palette. You can see here's my poly mesh 3D ring I was working on. Here's all my default primitives. And some of the default primitives have changed, like that gear that we made changes to has inherited those changes, but that's called gear 3D1. The original gear is still sitting out here. Here's the original Helix, and then the Helix we changed a little bit. So you don't lose anything. However, if you were to close out a ZBrush right now, and I, ooh, I have it just cropped here. Uh, if you click this little X button right here, that's going to close ZBrush. And if you say, hey, don't save anything, you will lose all of this. So everything you've done up to this point, any changes you've made, any primitives, you're going to lose all of it. Now, there's two ways to save progress. The easy way is just to go up here to say File, Save As. And this is going to save as a ZPR or a Z project. And in fact, it's going to default to the Pixelogic ZBrush or 2021 Z Projects folder, which if we hit cancel and hit the comma key again to bring up our light box or click the light box button, you're going to see it has a project tab. And if you save it in that folder, you'll actually be able to double click it and load it up from here. Alternatively, you can go up here to tool, save as, and you can save a Z tool. Now, I know it's been weird. I know we're talking about primitives and dragging things on a canvas and edit mode and... I know it's different. I know it's bizarre if you're coming from another 3D program where you have an outline or an objects and cameras and lights and it's easily clickable and stuff. ZBrush is a little different. It's very powerful in certain ways, but it also inherits some atypical ways to work. But if you can get over this initial hump, these first handful of videos, it's all easy from here on out. So if you can grasp these fundamental concepts, you're in good shape. So we know what a primitive is, and we know what a polymesh 3D is. It's something we can sculpt on, and a primitive is something we can initialize and then hit poly, make polymesh 3D and sculpt on it. And in order to save our progress, we can go up here to File, Save As, or Tool, Save As. And the difference between those is a File, Save As, is going to save a Z project, a ZPR, and that's going to save everything in your scene. So if you've been over here doing a bunch of crazy stuff and just kind of playing around like, hey, here's a polymesh 3D plane we were working on, we'll hit... Actually, we'll just uh, make our brush size, draw size very big again, and we'll sculpt on this a little bit. And you know what? Let's go up here and we'll say clone. We'll clone off a copy of this, and we'll sculpt on this a little bit. And then we'll clone it off again. We'll sculpt on this a little bit, and maybe we'll go into back into our Polymesh 3D ring, and we'll sculpt on it, and then I'll clone it off. We'll keep sculpting on it here. If you want to save every single one of these, make sure you go up here to File, Save As, and Save as a Project. That's going to save your document settings, any materials that you've changed up to this point, any lighting you've changed, and every single tool in here. And you may think, hey, that's great. Why would I ever not want to do that? Well, generally speaking, when I'm in ZBrush, I'm just working on a, I don't work on a ton of tools over here. I might have some garbage tools where it's like I'm going to go and make an insert mesh brush or just kind of mess around with something, but then go back to my actual object I want to focus on. But for the most part, I'm just working on one thing. And in that, if that's the case, I'm just going to go over here to Tool Save As and just save as a Z tool. It's a little bit more concise of a file, but don't let that confuse you. It will save your tool and all of your subtools. It will save any poly painting you've done, any array meshes, deformation, surface noise, fiber mesh. It's going to save everything in this menu. And this is the biggest menu in ZBrush by a long shot. So anything you do in the tool menu, it'll save. You're not going to lose much. In fact, the only thing you're going to lose is any miscellaneous tools you have sitting out here. And again, any material or lighting stuff. But if you're just sculpting or working on an object, you don't really need to worry about that too much. It will maintain your material settings if you're just using the whatever you have loaded in here automatically. So you don't even have to worry about that that much. Again, you slave your poly paint and all that good stuff. But you will lose if you go in here to a material and you make any slider adjustments to it. You're not going to save. It's not going to save that with your Z tool. But for the most part, Generally speaking, if you're just working on an asset, Tool Save As is great. Uh, if you want to save a bunch of stuff, File Save As is also great. Now there's a caveat to that. If I hit the comma key, you're going to see we have a Project tab and a Tool tab. If I want to load up a tool in here, no problem. I got to go, I can load up a, I can go in here to Tool and just double click the Dogsy tool, for example, and then hit the comma key. And now I have the Dogsy tool in my scene. And I have everything else I'm working on too. 
If I want to load up a tool manually, I can go in here to load tool. I can load but load up the demo soldier. Now I have the demo soldier Z tool here. And you're gonna see when I loaded that up, it has all of the subtools with it. It has any subdivision history we have, which we'll get to later. And we'll go ahead and turn off polyframe. Uh, any poly painting that may be on it, it'll go ahead and bring all of that in, no problem. And here's the rest of our tools here. So loading up Z tools, super easy. If I go in here to the comma key and I go in here to project and I double click the dog Z project. Now this is a Z project. So it has the document settings, any extra tools it has over here, lighting, etc. So when I double click this and would you like to save our changes? Um, if I hit no, I'm going to lose all this. And in this case, not a big deal. So I'm going to hit no. And now you're going to see it wiped everything out of my scene. Now there is a way around that before I make that seem like a bad thing. You can always go in here and say load tools from project. If you just want to go in here to ZBrush 2021, for example, Z projects, and just grab anything in here, like the demo anime head. And you're going to see even in here, there's a demo Zolder C project. So let's load that up. And now we loaded in these tools. You can also click on the comic key, go in here to tool. And I know this is getting confusing. I can double click the soldier Z tool. So ZPR is a Z project. Z tool is a Z tool. But between the Demo Soldier Z project and the Demo Soldier Z tool, there's no difference. The only difference would be if I go in here to File, Save As, it's going to save my document and my camera and all that stuff and my Z tool. If I go in here to just save the Z tool, that's all it saves. Now, if I was to go up here right now and say File, Save As, I would save a Z project and I have my Demo Soldier twice, uh, the Z tool that we brought in and the Z project and my dog. And if I sent this file to anybody and they went over here to file open, it would have my document settings, it would have my camera, any material changes I've had, etc. If so if I just want to send somebody a model, I'm just going to go to tool save as. Now if I do that, it's just going to save this demo soldier with all its sub tools and poly paint and stuff. If I click on the dog and save as, it's going to save this as a Z tool of just the dog. The rest of these things do not get saved. So if I want to save these as Z tools, I have to go through here and say demo soldier, demo, demo soldier, save as, dog, save as, etc. So to simplify things for this course, if you're just in here and you're sculpting on the dog and you want to save your project, tool save as is the simplest way to do that. However, I just want to make you aware that if you go in here and you're in the project tab, if you just load up a project, you're going to lose everything like the demo anime head. It's going to clear our scene, load up the anime head. So if you want to bring in a project or somebody sends you a project and you don't want to lose any of the tools you have sitting in here in your working session, just go in here to load tools from project. If they send you Z tools, that's even easier. Just go in here to load tool or navigate to where that is in here in your light box. And now you've got both. You got your dog and your head here. Now, along the same train of thought here, if you go into the comma key, we've already talked about what a project is, a ZPR, and what a tool is. We've even talked about what a document is. That's your document setting in here. You can go in here to document save as. I don't really do this a lot. Just like we mentioned, a file save as is a Z project. It's going to save your document settings, your camera, your lighting, your materials. That's also what a document saves, but it won't save your model information. It just saves material, lighting, and document information. If that's important to you, document save as will do that, but rarely do I ever use that now. If I want to save that stuff, I just do a file save as. That'll grab my model and all that stuff. Uh, you also see in here underneath document, it actually shows up here underneath file under canvas. So if I go file canvas save as, that's saving your document. File save as is a Z project. File tool mesh save as is the same thing as clicking that Z tool. In fact, you're going to see when I hover over these, it actually highlights over there in the upper right hand corner. So these are actually the same buttons as what's in our tool menu. So tool mesh save as will also save your Z tool. Also here in the comma key, uh, brushes, textures, alphas we'll get to later. If you go all the way to the right here, you're going to see there's a quick save section. And up here at the very top, you see quick save. You can hit nine to do a quick save. And what that does is save a Z project. And that's important. So while you're working in the session, it's like I'm working on the dog and I'm working on this head here. And I go up here and I hit quick save. Here you see quick save completed successfully. If we hit the comma key, go to that quick save section, you see you have a QS 14 uh, UH. If you want to know where your quick saves are, just click on that. You're going to see it goes right here into that directory. So I can navigate there real quick so we can talk about it. So here we are, uh, see users, public documents, ZBrush data 2021, quick save uh, folders right in here. And here's our QS Z project. So your Z project, when you hit quick save, is going to save everything in here, even your camera angle and stuff like that. So you need to worry about losing anything. Now, if we ever crash ZBrush in this exact same folder uh, where it says quick save, 
you may see a recovered Z project, a recovered Z tool, and recovered Z documents. And now that we know what those files are, you know you can probably double click that Z tool when it crashes, go in here, and if it's got a recovered Z tool, double click it, you're probably right back where you started. So quick save and recovery will be in the same area. Quick saves will be QS underscore whatever. And then your recovery files will say recover. Now, here's one really important thing. If we click uh, the comma key to go out of Lightbox, go in here to Preferences. If we go down here to the Quick Save Options, you can see the maximum duration is set to 20. So that means while you're working in ZBrush, uh, every 20 minutes, regardless of what you're doing, it's going to save a Quick Save file. So that's just a nice backup. If you don't like that or you want to shorten that while you're working on lighter files or lengthen that when you're working on heavier files, it may take a little bit longer to save and it takes you out of your rhythm. That's where you can do that. Of course, if you're going to make any changes in here, go up here to config, store config. So if you make this bigger or smaller, just make sure you hit store config. So every time you start up ZBrush, you'll inherit that change. Uh, restoration is basically if you stop using ZBrush for a minute and ZBrush is idle, like you went to the bathroom, you got to drink water, uh, they'll go ahead and do a quick save for you. So that's not too bad, especially if you're not in ZBrush using it, then keeping that at one minute is probably fine. Now down here, it's gonna say max quick save files is set to a thousand. Now that's a lot, especially when your files start getting bigger into the hundreds of megs or even the gigs, depending on the type of files you work on. If you're running out of disk space, this is a really good place to check. You can change this. In fact, let's change this to 50, hit enter, go up here to config, store config, hit okay. And now it'll just say 50 before it starts deleting your old ones. And again, you can always access those by hitting the comma key, going into your quick save folder and they'll all be in here. And if you want the physical location, that's where you can find it. You just click on here. It'll give you the physical location. You can go in here and check them out. If you want to get rid of these, you can just hit control A. I'm going to control tap the quick save counter because I want to keep that. We'll just hit delete to delete all our QS files. And now when I hit uh, the comma key or just click on the quick save, you see everything is gone until I hit quick save and then click this again to update it. And there's our latest quick save. And one more quick thing, if I go back into that folder here, you're going to see here's our quick save folder. If we go back up one into the ZBrush data 2021, uh, here's your quick save path. So you can actually double click this and update uh, where you want your quick saves to go. Same thing for the scratch disk path. Uh, but since we we're talking about quick saves, that's where that information is.